Hey everyone, it's Sprouty here, your best friend, your favourite fragrance reviewer, the best first impression as a... Uh, and I'm here to talk about a recent fragrance delivery that I've taken. I say recent, this actually arrived. You should really see this. On the 4th, nope, on the 8th of June. This has been sitting with me now for four and a half months. I just I wanted to do this video and I've not been bothered to do the video. Therefore, I haven't opened the package to actually smell it. So this is it. This is the new fragrance from a uh, new. This is now the oldest collect. The I can't speak. This is the second most recent release from a regional door. It's Aquilaria Blossom in collaboration with a perfumer from, well, or the fragrance distiller, or the, the Oud distiller from Aga Aura, Taha. Syed, I can't think of a certain, I think it's Syed. Yeah, Taha's a nice guy, I've talked to him a few times. I've owned a couple of his Atars, a couple of his Oud oils. And this was done in collaboration with Russian Adam and Taha, so, Let's see what's all about. Quite a nice box. It's 30 mil, I believe, with a 3D printed cap. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So, first impression. I've actually read quite a bit of this, as usual, which will skew my perceptions of it. I probably shouldn't have done that, but hey ho, what can you do? Hmm. The spray is not the best on that. This it only puts out a very small cloud compared to, fucking hell. <coughs> yeah, that's strong. Wow. Compared to the <laughs> compared to the previous releases where they had that cool uh, classic collection bottles with really good sprayers, that spray is not very good. Yeah, this is strong. I mean, I'm not going to smell my arm straight away. It's kind of wafting about in the air. It smells quite high quality, I must say. There's a... an orange sort of thing I pick up on. That's curious. It's kind of dense, but light and airy, which is absolutely contradictory. But there's a lightness in there which is kind of a fruitiness but behind that there's a density and a bit of a resinous thing if i remember there's if i recall there's myrrh in here which i can sort of see as this resinous backbone i'm familiar with myrrh in terms of i have the actual myrrh resin itself I've got a few fragrances where that's a prominent note, like Fahrenheit Absolute and Eau Sauvage Parfum 2012. And yes, I'm definitely getting that Myrrh vibe. There's a slight sweetness here. It's kind of definitely not overly sweet because sweetness is something I'm a bit not too fond of, I guess. But it is something I'm actually becoming a bit more accustomed to and tolerant of. Yeah, that's that's odd in the sense of I'm quite familiar with the region. I've I've smelled a lot of their fragrances, and there's a common theme that runs through them. You know, there's a certain DNA, as people say, to the brand. This doesn't seem to sort of give you that DNA, I guess. Like their fragrances tend to smell quite old, musty, vintage esque, resinous, deep, dark. I have described this as resinous already, but there's there's an airiness to it. There's no real darkness, I would say. So yeah, the concept behind this fragrance is trying to emulate what a a flower of argwood would smell like, I believe. Because obviously argwood trees, the, the oud itself is an infection of the wood, of the bark. So the tree gets infected. It produces this resin to sort of counteract this re the infection. And it's that then which is sort of picked off the tree or sort of the tree gets chopped down. The resinous wood is kind of taken. That gets distilled. 
the heat and from so you immerse the wood in water and boil it and that effectively extracts the oil oil is heavier oil is lighter than water science therefore it rises the top and then that kind of gets collected then separate so the water and the oil is separate wood oil in essence and yeah there's there's something similar here that I can't you know you smell something and you kind of get these associations but they're all just kind of really imagine like a long piece of string with different things on there and it's at the very bottom of the string and that that association is really hard to sort of grasp in terms of what it is this is triggering that and there's a familiarity there but I can't place what it is Maybe it's the mirror because, yeah, I am sort of thinking of Osavage 2012, Osavage Parfum 2012. So I will make this my scent of the day because why not? Although I'm going out now within the hour, go for a mountain bike ride, so I won't be wearing these clothes, so I'm not sure how this will stick with me you know i've just sprayed on my shirt so it's gonna be half on my shirt half on my skin hmm yeah this it's an appealing scent you know a rage will be a rage is niche in the sense of it's quite out there you know it's not going to appeal to most people because i don't know the fragrances aren't really nice as such they do a skew kind of generic, simple, pleasurable sense. They are kind of difficult to wear at times. This doesn't seem to be of that kind of creation. It's much more friendly. There's nothing really... I'd say there's nothing really weird to this. Which can be a good thing. I find the same really with the Atlantic Ambergris. There's no real... It's not a hard scent to wear. There's no real weirdness to it. If you smell things like Oud Zen, the, the Ottoman Empire, the Russian Musk, they're just very not people pleasers. In fact, I done a first impression video of the Russian of the classic collection of the Ottoman Empire, Oud Zen and the Russian Musk. And I've since sold the Russian Musk and the Ottoman Empire because they're just not really wearable. I didn't get much pleasure from them, and I know that people around me didn't have a very good reaction to it. Not that that's much of a concern to me. Like, you know, I don't really want to offend people with how I smell, but people in work were saying it wasn't very nice. And I just kind of realized that I didn't want those scents. I'm an arsehole. I sold them on for massive inflated prices, and I effectively got Oud Zen for free by selling the other two bottles, so no complaints there. That is the one thing about Rigel Do is they hold their value, they go up in price, and if you're a knobhead, you can sort of pr profit off that, which is what I've done. Shoot me. <laughs> so yeah, first impressions are favourable. This is a nice fragrance. Not challenging. Note-wise, you've probably seen a few first impressions by me. I am absolutely shit at picking up notes. And yeah, go the same goes here. There's a nice feel to it. It's quite, I don't know, I'd say it's quite appropriate for all seasons. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like a citrus, freshy kind of summer scent. It doesn't lean towards a winter scent. It just seems like it would work in all ranges. I am not going to do my follow-up first impressions with further thoughts. This is going up as it is. Keep this video relatively short for me. And yeah, that's that. I've got a lot more first impressions to do because... I've been buying fragrances like I should not be doing. But yeah, maybe you'll see some more videos of me in the coming months. All the best.